Hello, this is Gio. Hey, look what I have here. I have two Hewitt Packard or HP calculators from the 1970s. So one of my quote hobbies is I like to pick up Hewitt Packard calculators when I can find them cheap. And especially these ones were a special find. This is a HP 35 from the early 1970s. I actually think this is one of the first Hewitt Packards that was actually manufactured. Uh, and I think it might be either the third or fourth model because it has kind of like the printing on the keys. Uh, I think earlier models had the printing on the case itself right above the keys. So most Hewitt Packard calculators use this thing called reverse Polish notation. And so most lay people who pick up a Hewitt Packard calculator won't really be able to operate it because there are no equal signs, as you can perhaps see here. What you do is uh, instead of saying like one plus one equals two, what you do would you would do uh, one enter one plus, and that will give you uh, the value. Well, that may seem really bothersome to do, especially for simple equations like one plus one equals two, but for longer equations, very complex equations, reverse Polish notation actually is easier in the long run. And a lot of engineers and scientists like to use Hewitt Packard calculators with reverse Polish notation just because it makes calculating long strings of equations much easier. But we're not talking about reverse Polish notation today. Now moving on, this is actually a rarer, a slightly later model, but rarer calculator. This is a Hewitt Packard HP 10 calculator. And this is just a standard 10 key with a uh, printer. Uh, it's a thermal uh, paper, so it prints thermally. And this actually does not use reverse Polish notation. This, is, this uses very similar method, one plus one equals. You can actually see the equal sign. And I think this is either Perhaps one of the only uh, calculators HP makes with just standard equal sign. This is perhaps one of the simplest calculators they make. As you can see, there's not really, you know, there's not even uh, logs or, or pi keys. It's basic math, you know, plus, minus, multiplication, division, percentage, and equals. And this one's rare just because they just, just didn't make as many of them and they weren't as popular. So I did purchase these untested, and the reason I didn't couldn't test them is because they didn't come with power cords. Now, I don't really at this time want to pick up power cords because the original HP power cords are pretty expensive. They can range from $35 to $50 each, and I really don't want to spend that kind of money just to run these calculators. But the interesting thing about these calculators is that they did, they do have batteries. So, but they use a rechargeable nickel cadmium battery. And it's not just standard batteries, it's a battery pack manufactured by HP. So I just opened up the back battery compartment and here you can see the original nickel uh, cadmium battery pack. And as you can see, it's just three standard uh, batteries, just like that and uh, you stick this in and with the power cord the power uh, the power will charge the uh the battery pack and then you could unplug it and use the charged battery pack with your hp calculator now it's my understanding that you could run the hp 35 without the battery pack installed just with power cord I'm not 100% sure if you can do the same thing with the H, uh, HP 10. And so for the HP 35, the battery pack's kind of interesting, I believe. Uh, so, so these are pretty, I believe these are kind of soldered in there somehow in this plastic casing. You can't slip these batteries out without breaking the casing. On one side, you have two terminal connections, which again, I believe are soldered in there. Um, one of them, I believe that's the positive side, the other one's the negative. So I think that's positive, negative. And so when you stick it in here, these touch those terminals and you can charge or uh, dissipate the batteries as needed. So I have tried to charge this battery pack, but it's just so old, it really doesn't keep a charge. So what to do? Well, 
you can pick up some modern nickel cadmium batteries like I have here. Um, you can't really just stick them in here because those traditional terminals, the springs and the terminal connections for most you know, batteries aren't there. The actual terminals are right here. So it's a little problematic, uh, but just to test it out, I did get this little battery compartment case. Um, you can stick in these batteries like that, I believe, let's see, red is positive. You can just use do it this way just to test it out. Then turn on the switch. And sure enough, you can see it barely, but it does work. And so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, blah, blah, blah. So it does indeed work. Okay, so it does work, but what am I supposed to do? You know, I can't just hook this up with these alligator clips every time I wanna uh, run it. It'd be nice just to hold it with, you know, with the case shut and the door is shut and the battery pack inside. Well, there, I can just tape um, these together. I can't just put them in loose. I can tape these together, kind of solder some uh, contacts on each side so they, they're in a string and then uh, solder leads just like this to each one of these terminals. Put this in there and shut the door and it will work. So the problem is again, I don't have the plug. And so if, if I just solder something in there, if I had the plug, it would charge up and then I could use it. And then when it needs charging, I just plug it in again. It would just charge up just normally. But because I don't have the, the plug and I don't wanna get the plug right now, I basically have to desolder them, remove them, untape these things, take them out, recharge them in a portable thing that I have, uh, tape them back up, resolder. I don't want to do that. So I'm trying today to figure out how I could get a battery pack that works that I could just slip in and out of this thing really easily without soldering these terminals. And so. Uh, and, and so just like stick it in like this and take it out and then take the individual batteries out and charge them. So um, I could, I could uh, there are ways you could tape this and actually take them out as a pack and charge them. But I, I wanna just charge individual ones. So, so I do have this little pack right here, but it doesn't fit. So, and I would have to reorganize the terminals to, to make things work. Um, it just barely the wrong size. And so what, what can I do? Well, I, I think I'm gonna try to modify this case so it's the correct size. There is a little bit of problems. They're almost the same height. See, you can see they're almost the same. If I shave off a little bit here and there, I could probably get it to fit in there. But they're about the same height. The problem is with the batteries in, they're actually higher than this. And, and so, and it's because the batteries lie flat on the bottom. So somehow I'm gonna have to modify this case to get these batteries lower. So I'm gonna work on that, uh, on, on this one. I think it might be doable for this calculator. The HP 10 is another matter and I'll show you why. Now the battery compartment in the HP 10 is a little bit of a, it's, it's a marvel. So the engineers really had a heyday designing this battery pack, and I'll show you why. So the back door, the battery pack is in. The back door, you actually have to put a lot of pressure on, on this, this cover so the top will pop off. And so by applying pressure, this pops out, and then you can remove the, the door. And of course, you could remove the battery pack. Unlike the HP 35, you need the battery pack in there for the, the, the cover to stay in place. You could kind of slip it up, but it, it actually just falls out. So you need the, the battery pack in place. So you have to design whatever kind of bootleg you put in here. You can't just tape up a bunch of batteries and solder them in here because even then, the case will fall out and I'll show you why. So this, it has four AA batteries. It has springs up on top. And so unlike the, the 35, these batteries are not soldered in. They could actually move up. And you see there's like uh, 
four four places right here where connects to these four things, I guess. But in fact, this is the negative side and this is the positive side. And these little uh, things don't do anything. They, they don't actually contact anything. What they do do is they help push up these batteries. Now you might think, well, all you really need to do is contact these terminals. Why do you need to push up? Uh, let's get them right away. Why do you need to push up the batteries? And so I, I'll show you here. As I push it down, you can see the battery's kind of moving up. So you might ask, well, you just need to contact these. Well, why do you need so much pressure to push up these batteries? Well, the reason is, so when you push this thing in, it stays in place. So that's one thing. So that's one way to keep it in place. But now the door, it, it fits in naturally here with these little teeth exposed. But if you notice right here, there's these two little plastic pieces right there. Now what do those do? Well, those interact with this battery pack. So this is a really complicated system here. So as the battery pack closes, you'll notice the battery pack itself has these little notches which are beveled. So as it closes, as you apply pressure to this door downward, so it kind of pushes the battery pack forward or down, and at the same time as you apply pressure to this door, it pushes the door up. So this is the complication here. So somehow I'm gonna to have to mod something to, to mimic this interaction. So when you push this down, the battery pack and the springs engage more and the springs at the same time push this door up. And I'll show you slowly. So I'll put the battery pack back in. Again, the engineers had a heyday designing this thing. I put this thing in, it fits nicely. So these little teeth are out. But as I press down, again, the springs will engage because of those little teeth. The battery pack put, moves down. This door will actually move up. So as I push down, pop, it engages. And so this is being held in place by the springs in the battery pack. So this is, this is quite complicated. And I'm not actually sure if I'm gonna solve this. Again, uh, there's lots of uh, suggestions how to uh, put in battery packs for these old calculators. For the 35, it works fine. For the 10, you need something special. So again, I'm gonna start with the HP 35 because it's easier. I'm gonna to try to modify this. I'm gonna to have to take some of these uh, springs and probes out. Uh, there's some things in the way, but I'm gonna modify this and let's see if I can get this thing to fit properly. Okay, so I did devise a system by which it will work. So basically I took one of these battery containers. I just took the terminal sides. As you can see, I had to file them down to shape so they fit. There's a little bit of a ridge here and here that I had to actually cut in so they fit in, but I could loosely place them right there. I took some little crimps to connect to the uh, the, bat, uh, the calculator terminal, I didn't want to solder, although I could have. Uh, it was a little hard to crimp those on and I could have damaged the actual terminals themselves. So maybe soldering would have been best, but these just kind of loosely stay in there and I could take them out if I want. The lid does indeed shut and lock. 
There you go, that's, that's the big thing. We take this out and then we stick in the batteries. And so the batteries are reasonably easy, oops, reasonably easy to get in there. You just kind of have to hold the device while you're sort of sticking them in because it is kind of loosely placed in there. But you only really have to do this when the, when you need to recharge. And if you have the cable, they'll charge themselves in here. So again, they fit in there. Um, I could shut the door like that, turn it around, hit the power, and sure enough, it powers on. And, that, and this way, I could actually replace the rechargeable batteries anytime I need. Just flip it over and take them out. Now the HP 10 is a different beastie. I did come up with some ideas and I tried them out, but nothing seemed to work. The, uh, the issue with the customized battery pack that HP so di diligently designed, um, it's very difficult to get around this. Basically what I would need to do would be I would need to open this battery pack up and maybe modify it itself, but I don't really want to destroy this battery pack. Although it doesn't really charge, it is kind of a collector's item and I don't really want to destroy this. So um, I can just use alligator clips to power up, power it up just to test it out. I'm not going to be using this every day, so maybe it's okay. If something comes to me, I will maybe design something and show it to you all. But for right now, I just really can't get past this issue with how to design a battery pack and still close this door tight. So this one is for the future. And there you go. So one is battery packed, powered up. The other one, not quite. But I do hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please hit that like button at the bottom of the screen and even consider subscribing to my channel. I have many more videos to come. Bye-bye.